for those of us who are not familiar or want to refresh, tell us Mike Webster, the story, and, and what's so important and compelling about him and the concussion. Well, he was, Webster was essentially patient zero in the NFL's concussion crisis. He was a, uh, a center for the Pittsburgh Steelers for 17 years. And, um, you know, he was known as a, a, as a player who was uh, intelligent and savvy. He was sort of the, the second captain on the, of, the, of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, which was quarterbacked by, by Terry Bradshaw. He very much had his life together, but uh, toward the end of his career, his family started noticing significant changes. And he just wasn't taking care of his finances. He was incredibly forgetful. He had um, incredible mood swings and would become violent with his family. And then soon enough, he was completely estranged from his family and homeless and basically living out of his truck. Uh, some of the more extreme behavior that he went through um, was he, you know, he had insomnia, and so he would have his, his son ta use a taser to, to put him to sleep at, at times. Um, and then finally, uh, he died at the age of 50, and he was taken to the Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office where, uh, a, young, uh, where a young pathologist named Bennett Amalu just happened to be working that day, and he was incredibly curious. And he was not a football fan, but he knew a little bit about Webster's case history. And he decided during the autopsy to cut open his skull and preserve his brain and study it. And what he found was the very first case of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is a, a brain disease that had previously been associated only with boxers um, in Webster. And so it was the first case in which uh, an NFL player had been diagnosed with, with CTE or brain damage related to, to football.